Last video, we were working on the wall. Some time has elapsed and the wall is done, or at least we're ready to move on to the next steps of this, which is installing the LED landscape lighting and doing the capstones. Obviously, it's been a while because instead of my True Work sun shirts, I'm wearing my Wooby hoodie and pants. What we're gonna do, actually, I don't like this intro. I'm gonna start over. Okay. Last video was the wall. I don't like that. Sorry. You're just gonna work with me. <laughs> I know, I see you work with those sometimes. Okay, <sighs> hope you don't get too much wind noise. And if that bothers you, Anyway, so I'm gonna talk about light placement, how I went through that, and then how all the lights are gonna kind of get hooked together and then actually lay the lights out and then talk through how I'm doing the capstones, both on the wall and also the steps, cause I'm doing the steps a little bit different. First of all, placement. That just started with pulling some measurements and deciding how many lights I wanted to pay for, really. Even with that, there's a few places where things get tricky. And for me, the technical aspects of a build normally are not near as challenging as this kind of stuff. Let's take this first section as an example. So on my lower wall here, between the steps and the end, I've got like a 22 foot section. Up there, I've got like a 16, 17 foot section. And I know I need a light over here. And this is where I get tripped up. This is like, well, I think a light centered would be good. So I can center a light here and center a light there, but then they're not gonna be in line. But on the other end of the wall, between the steps, all my lights are gonna be in line. Here they wouldn't, is that bad? I don't know. Well, it's big enough, what I could do is do two lights. So I do a center of light up here, put two here and split the baby and then they're not all lined up at all. Or I could put one up there, put one down here in line and then kind of center one in between. I spend way too much time thinking over those kind of little details. A good piece of advice for how to solve this is if there's someone in your life who after you do this is gonna come and go, well, I really think it'd look better if you done that. Ask that person and have them tell you and then later you can say, I did what you told me. Fortunately, I don't, so it's all on me. Or maybe unfortunately, because then they could just tell me how to do everything right. I've kept thinking about this and what I think I'm gonna do is just center on each. And the reason being, if I center this, the light down here is gonna be about the same distance from the edge as all the same spacing as the rest of the lights. And up there, I might throw it in the middle and see how that looks. And I think that might actually fall about where the middle is down here. That's super wordy, but uh... And then on the stairs, obviously we're gonna put lights. One thing you wanna make sure is you're not tripping or kicking stairs. So I'm gonna have one under my butt and then these two. But here's another decision point. Obviously this light is actually illuminating that step down there. So on the bottom, do I need a, a light? I decided not to, because once this gets grasped and everything's gonna be a lot closer, and I think this will add enough. This is also one of those things I spend way too much time thinking of. Another reason I don't need them on the bottom is I'm doing my side lights on the corners, which I feel is gonna help transition and balance how everything looks between all the lights on the straight sections, working into the corners, and also really highlight the boundaries, because if these lights make sure you see the step height to walk, these corner lights are gonna help make sure you see the width of the step and actually get in the stairwell and kind of funnel your vision and everything up the stairs as if stairs are hard to use. Or steps. If you're into semantics, steps are outside, stairs are inside a dwelling. So yeah, if you ever wonder the difference between steps and stairs, outside versus inside. Use my crotches and all sweaty this time because you would definitely see it. Is the wind too bad or is it all right? Really? Okay. Yeah, I think it's tucked. Yeah, it's tucked in. So that's probably helping. And all this stuff I actually got on Amazon. I have the links below. So if you want to buy the exact things I did, you can you can do that. As you saw down there on the stairs, I have these six inch lights. I'm using these smaller ones because they're cheaper and lower voltage. These all work off DC, so I have a DC transformer. And of course, it's only going to transform so many watts. And based on its power outage, I can only run so many lights. To run more lights, I either should have bought a bigger transformer or I need to use some less powerful lights. The ones I'm going to use on the big straight stretches are these 12 inch ones. And I just felt that these were overkill on these steps considering they're only like six, seven feet wide. And on the wide runs, I'm spacing these out 12 feet pretty wide. I got little ones, less juice, and I can use more of them and they're cheaper for around the steps. These are nifty. The wires are actually pre-tinned and that means they already have solder on them. So if you're gonna solder all your connections, that's very handy, but it also helps prevent corrosion. We're gonna get back to that. So the basic concept here is I have 
this spool of 12 gauge wire that's gonna be my backbone. So this is gonna run the whole length all the way back to where the pool house is gonna be and the transformer. And then all my lights are just going to tee into this. The way I'm going to achieve that easily and quickly and with least chance of corrosion is by using wire taps. Now, obviously what you could do is cut, strip this, expose the wire, then wire nut it all together, tape the daylights out of it, or strip it and then solder it all together and tape it up or whatever. I'm gonna use these guys with some dielectric grease, which is just a conductive grease, so it helps prevent oxidation by blocking oxygen, but is also conductive, so it doesn't interfere with the conductivity, you know, doesn't stop the uh, electricity from flowing around. And this will be very quick and I think minimize my chance of issues with corrosion. You know, if you think about something being in the elements and lasting 10 years, that's a really long time. But if you think about, you know, oh, it's, it's gonna be great for five years, depending on what it is that's cool for landscape lighting. Like, I don't wanna be out here every five years having to redo all my connections. That sounds horrible. I wanna get like a good 20 years or so out of this. So that's why I'm taking this approach and hopefully it does last me that long because I'm lazy. What do I need now? These lights actually came with anchors and screws and on this plate, there's a bunch of holes so you can screw these down. I'm just going to gravity attach them, which means the capstone that goes on top holds it in place and those will all have landscaping adhesive to hold them down. In the meantime though, I've just got some pavers and I'm gonna use these just to hold them in place and I'll make sure everything's perfect when I put the capstones and lock them down. For the most part, I will actually keep this bundle all close and not cut this off because the end is already pre tinted and I want to have the extra just tucked in here in case I ever need it But because this is my end and I'm kind of pushing it on my 265 foot reel being able to run both of my backbones all the way which I have to run two backbones. I can't tie these together because of the ampacity of the water, of the wire. I can only run so many lights off of it. So if I try to put all the lights on just one backbone, I'd be pushing the capacity of the wire. Running two, I'm totally safe. So it's gonna take a little bit more wire. But point being, this one I'm actually gonna untangle and run it back since this is the end, because this is gonna save me 10 feet of wire. And actually, because I'm gonna do it over there, it'll save me 20 feet of wire total. But the rest of them, I'll just leave bundled up with excess wire by the light, so that way, if I ever have any issues with these lights, I can snip the wire, pull a little bit extra out, and then put in a new light or something if I need to without having to like dig up dirt and find the connector and go back and do it that way. I say all that as if, if a light burns out, I'll actually replace it. I'll probably wait till they like all burn out and then replace all of them and just redo it. But it's nice to plan for that at least. And then same thing on placement. On some of these stairs, it's really obvious where the definite corner is and where lights should go. But on some of these, it's not, especially this is the first stair I did. So it's not super balanced. So it's like, I hate that this one's on a crack, but honestly that location is where it looks best. And if you're sitting there thinking, that would have been so much easier. He should have just put those lights in while he built the wall and then he could have put the wires in the wall. You know, when I was building the wall, I thought about that, but then I remembered I'm a video creator. And if I did it the hard way, I could get so many people to comment on the video because they watch it and go, <laughs> I'm gonna tell them. And comments help make me money. Now for everything I said about using those wire taps, here I'm going to tie all the stair lights together because there's no reason to have four of those wire taps right beside each other on this backbone. So I'm gonna go get my soldering iron, make a little pigtail to connect to these, and then I'll wire tap that into the backbone because I don't want that many connections right beside each other. And uh, those things are a little pricey, so I'll conserve them, make sure I have enough for the whole project. I'm gonna probably make this easier if I ran the tape out while I did it. Where'd I set that big tape? Yeah, thank you, sir.
Do I open that other box to go wrap three? I already did. All right. I think we're ready to run the first backbone and try those connectors. Hopefully in like six months, I'll be swimming right here. Hey, I've got a shadow, like first time today. So now I have four lights, but only one little jumper here that I can use my T-taps to go into the, uh, the backbone. So I twisted them all together with my linesman's pliers, soldered them, as you saw, so everything's coated and definitely all in there together so everything's connected. Put on some little wire nuts and taped them up. These are extra protected too, because we're doing this in winter when the humidity's low, so there's less trapped relative moisture in the air inside there that can cause corrosion than there would be in say summer. And I totally made up that last part, but um, it sounded believable and I'm on YouTube. So you know you can trust me for any sciencey things. And that's about as political as I get. Since this is the end, I think I'll solder these two and send that it out. May as well. And actually, these are gonna be exposed for a little bit before I get them covered, so we'll just give them a little extra love. Do you wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> Computer, overcompensate. Now, finally get into these little T-taps. Saddle piece goes on first, and you take the piercer, and I'm totally making these names up. Oh, wait, wait, a little grease. Oh, also, pretty much anything that's a foil cap and has a lid, a lot of times there's a piercer on the lid to break the foil, in case you didn't know that. Now that little needle that's on it, it's just gonna poke through the insulation and contact that wire. And of course, it's all part of the metal piece out here. So now we can take our other lead, put our conductor through cap, shove it all in there, tighten it down. Give a little tug test, doesn't come out, it's connected. And quite waterproof, don't have much metal exposure. You know, this has the most and it's pre-tinned and we got the grease in there. So yeah, I feel pretty good about these. Yeah, this tape actually just isn't sticking to anything. Mental acuity levels? Um, timeline and budget. Gonna be happy with neither. Now you gotta cut the tips off these, right? See this hole in the handle? So brought some of my capstones over. They're stone and they cap the wall, hence capstone. And I've got some Loctite landscape adhesive. That's what's gonna hold this stuff down. You could also mix up mortar and mortar it or whatever. It's gonna be a little slow getting started here because I've got this like one and a half, so I need to split some of these in half. Pretty easy, like I was splitting the retaining walls, use this. Um, later, I've got a friend who has a big wet saw, and I'll probably borrow that to like speed through the process, especially where there's more angles, and I wanna cut those little angles to match the curves. But uh, for now, I'm gonna focus on just getting the straight parts done, and you could still do the curves with, you know, chisel or angle grinder. I've got a Milner Hoffen diamond disc that cuts really great. I'll probably alternate between using this to score and then chopping with this just because it can be kind of slow, but uh, this is definitely more strenuous.
I think I'm gonna do it on a bump with that first one. Now that I'm on something flat, it's going better. start getting after these steps now since I just have this number 57 here that's not gonna be able to really get flat enough to put the papers on that are gonna go behind the capstones to finish out the steps because the capstones will only take up a little bit of this so I pick papers to do the back side if I put sand directly on there though it's gonna wash through and then the papers get all wonky because they're fairly small so what I did is picked up quite a few bags of paper base unfortunately none of the pits around here carry uh, HPP high performance base and there's a few other products you can get by the truckload normally can't really find those but I'm just using this top coat so it's a much finer aggregate I'll do a very thin coat not to build the full base to put the papers on though you could I'm using this just to fill in all the cracks and make sort of a layer that the sand won't filter through and then with the top of sand I could just use this paper base but I can get sand by the truckload significantly cheaper so this is just to sort of skim coat the 57 so the sand doesn't go through sand on top and then layer it and I've got landscape um, adhesive same stuff I was using on the capstone I'll use for the blocks and I already did the top steps because that was kind of tricky and that was the first set of steps I built so they were kind of wonky and stupid anyways I figure I learn there because they'll be seen the least and they're kind of screwed I think I got my technique down jump to time lapse and knock out this little one down here That's it. Feel really good about getting this step done. Thanks for following along. That's how I did lights and capstones, including the whole weird thing with the stairs. If you're the kind of person that likes to like, comment, share videos, thank you so much. That really helps a lot for me to take the time to do these videos instead of just doing my projects. Uh, if you're not, that's cool. Thank you for your viewership, and I'm glad you stuck around. Hope you learned something, were inspired, or at least entertained, if nothing else. Anyway, until next time, make time to make something. All right. Uh,